Dewey, A Magic School for Girls Chapter Book, Chapter 7, Moonbeam Goes to School. Julie's mom read the handout that Miss Betsy had given all the students explaining the details of Bring Your Magic Pet to School Day. Oh, this is a fun day, said her mom. So can I bring Moonbeam to school with me, asked Julie. Yes, of course, her mom answered. It's one of the best days at Miss Annie's Magic School. And he can stay with me the whole day, asked Julie. Yes, said her mom. Just be careful and make sure he doesn't get into any trouble. Yippee, cried Julie. A whole day at school with Moonbeam. Bring your magic pet to school day. Almost made Julie forget about the flying broomstick lessons. It was great news. Julie was brushing Moonbeam's black fur coat and picking out a pretty bow to put on his collar while she talked to her mom. Okay, said her mom, after you show Moonbeam to your classmates, you should keep him in his kitty carrier. Moonbeam is still just a kitten, which means he's too young to protect himself. Who knows what other kinds of pets will be there? And you know how he loves to climb everything. Don't worry, said Julie, I'll be super careful. I would never let anything happen to Moonbeam. Isn't that right, kitty? Julie nuzzled the kitten as he playfully swatted at her nose. Julie knew that the next day of school would be the best ever and for the first time in a long time she couldn't wait to go to school when julie met bailey and kate to go to school the next day she had moonbeam in a cat carrier bailey had her pet dog woofer on a leash and kate was carrying a fishbowl in which there was a betta fish named hop is that moonbeam in the kitty carrier asked bailey <clears throat> yes answered julie she was thrilled isn't that great? I wish I could bring Moonbeam to school every day. Me too, said Kate and Bailey. When Julie and Bailey got to their classroom, they saw pets of all sorts. Miss Betsy had set aside the morning for the students to take turns introducing their pets. The students were also able to ask each other questions about their pets. Pamela had a parakeet in a little travel cage made of wire. Parakeets are very fine pets for witches, said Miss Betsy. They can often sense danger before we can. Liz had a giant toad in a plastic habitat. Miss Betsy reached in and patted the toad on its bumpy head. Toads may not look very intelligent, Miss Betsy said, but they are very wise and give very good advice to witches. When Bailey showed Woofer to the class, Miss Betsy said, Dogs make very good familiars for witches because they have excellent sense of smell and very good hearing. Mom? Yes, baby. I can pause. When it was her turn, Julie pu pulled Moonbeam from his carrier and held him up for the class to see. The students oohed and awed. Moonbeam looked around the class with wide, curious eyes. This is Moonbeam, said Julie proudly. His favorite things are chasing toys, taking naps, and cat treats. But he likes climbing most of all. Miss Betsy said, does anyone have any questions about Moonbeam? Heather said, how did you come up with his name? On the first night, I got Moonbeam, answered Julie. We were playing on my bed, and the moon was shining right through my window. Moonbeam opened his big green eyes and stared at the moon for the longest time. So I named him Moonbeam. How old is Moonbeam, Rebecca asked. Six months, said Julie. Then Miss Betsy talked to the class. Most of you already know that cats are a popular familiar for witches because they are naturally magical. Julie, thank you so much for sharing your pet with us today. Make sure you keep him in his carrier. I wouldn't want such a sweet kitten to get loose and get lost in the school or get chased around by one of the other pets. I will, said Julie, but it turned out this was easier to say than it was to do.